Well, good morning and thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. My name is Robert. I'm glad to have you watching today. We're continuing to look at the Ten Commandments as we finish up our time in Exodus over the spring here. And the Ten Commandments are one of the more well-known sections of the Bible. They're everywhere from courthouses to, to, to plaques in schools, or at least they used to be. Uh, but sometimes these are misunderstood with the intent. Often they're seen as a source of killjoy, of God not wanting us to enjoy certain things, when in reality they exist to help keep our life from danger and destruction that may happen with our own sinful tendencies and nature. And as we look at the Ten Commandments, they have a natural order and division, as maybe you've heard from some of the other pastors or just picked up along the way. The first four deal with how we see and interact with God. You shall have no other gods before the Lord. You should have no idols. Do not take the Lord's name in vain and honor the Sabbath. All those four have to do with how we interact with God. Then the last six deal with how we interact with people, starting first with the command to honor your father and mother, and then into practical ones like do not murder, and what we'll be looking at today, do not commit adultery. Now, there's not a lot of explanation needed on what is meant by that. It's pretty simple to understand that that is that you're not to have sex with someone who's not your spouse. It's pretty simple to understand what the command is. But as we look at that, you may wonder why it's elevated to the top 10 in terms of significance. So here's three reasons why I think this is in here. And we'll get to what to do with this command at the end. But the first reason that I think the command to not commit adultery is in here is the same reason all the commands are here, to keep our life from destruction. See, you probably have seen the destructive effects of adultery in our world. Maybe it's in your family, a friend's life, and perhaps even in your own life. Uh, but if the ten, ten Commandments are here to keep our life from destruction, then this specific one certainly warrants being in here as well. Second reason I think it's here is because it reinforces God's design for marriage and family. The original idea from God for marriage is one man, one woman for one lifetime. Everything else is a modification made by man that distorts God's design for marriage. And adultery, cohabitation, open marriages, and all things like this all erode the design that God has set in place for marriage unions. The third reason that I think it's in here is I believe that it is to set the people of God apart from the world. The people that were receiving these commands originally thousands of years ago were in a world that struggled with sexual purity and debauchery. And this is nothing new. Uh, in the same way, the people of God could represent him well by being different and unique in their romantic lifestyles and practices. And for us today as Christ followers, our command to follow God's plan and not the world's tendencies gives us that same opportunity to represent God to those around us. So what do we do with this command? Well, if you're married, you need to guard and protect your marriage from the temptations that exist all around us. And these aren't just the temptations of actual individuals in our life, but it goes beyond that as well. Because Jesus said these words in Matthew 5. He said, you've heard it said you should not commit adultery. He said, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if you're married or you're not, what are you doing to guard your thoughts from temptations to lusts over other people? What are you doing to guard your eyes from seeing and looking at people or images, either in person or online, that take you to that place of lust? Not only that, but what are you doing to be cautious with the people that are in your life? We, we need to be careful that we don't allow friendships with the opposite gender to get too close and too personal. Because the reality is that very few adulterous relationships begin in a bedroom. Most begin in seemingly innocent conversations with someone at work or in some other innocuous setting, and it progresses past the closeness of a friend or coworker. So the question is, what are you doing to not follow the path of the world around us? Because everything from music to movies to social media wants to lessen the significance of sex and marriage, yet it's one of the things that God identified as very important. So how will you follow God's path? How will you put up boundaries in your life so that you don't blow up your life in marriage and so that you can enjoy God's design while representing Him to the world around you? I hope this uh, explained this and encouraged you and hope you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.